devil never cry. Welcome to another video in a series of guides for Final Fantasy 16. In today's video, I'll be giving you my top tips to help you prevail in the world of Valisthea. These tips will be spoiler free, and I'll be covering more than just the combat of Final Fantasy 16. If you're interested in more guides and content for Final Fantasy 16, then subscribe, as there's plenty more on the way. And if you're looking specifically for combat guides, I've made two videos covering that topic already. And so without further ado, let's begin. First and foremost, one of the most important tips that I can give you is to simply explore the world of Valisthea, both when you're out in the open fields and when you're playing through the more tightly paced stages. Through your exploration, you'll find a myriad of useful things, such as gear, weapons, enemies that drop rare resources, or even peculiar relics of the fallen whose use will become apparent much later in the game. Up next, side quests. Side quests are extracurricular activities that you can partake in aside from completing the main quest and pushing the narrative forward, and the reason I suggest that you do these side quests is because more often than not, the rewards will most certainly be worth it. Particularly the rewards of the side quests that have the plus symbol in the side quest marker, this plus symbol actually signifies that you'll get a special reward from completing the specific side quests. For example, the ability to ride a chocobo out and about in the field, the crafting design documents for a rare piece of gear that you can't get anywhere else, or even the ability to carry more consumables into combat. Side quests and their completion also tie into the renown system which will unlock at a certain point in the game. Clive gains renown points by completing side quests and after eventually accruing a certain amount of them, you'll be able to cash them in for a bundle of rewards. Rewards can include things like crafting materials, unique pieces of gear, or even ability points that you're able to spend on specific iconic abilities. And so even if you're not interested in the world building and lore aspect of these side quests, they do provide tangible rewards which makes them worth doing. That then also brings us on to Notorious Marks, or the Hunt System. Again, once you reach a certain point in Final Fantasy XVI, you'll be able to seemingly stumble upon incredibly powerful enemies just out randomly in the field. Of course, this doesn't have to be randomly, as you can check a hunting board which will show you exactly where in the world they are, which will allow you to face them without being surprised. But these creatures are definitely worth searching out and fighting. Not only do they provide a thrilling fight that is both a challenge and will test your skills, but they also provide unique crafting materials which will allow you to craft even better, more powerful gear and weapons. That then conveniently ties into my next tip. If you're able to purchase or craft gear and weapons that are better than what you currently have equipped, then definitely do so. It's important that you check in on Blackthorn and Karen every time that the game tells you that new items are available for purchase or to be created. Otherwise, not only will you be leaving yourself at a disadvantage against enemies, but you'll also be missing out on some pretty sick sword designs. Moving on, let's talk about combat. Each weapon and skill in Final Fantasy 16 does two types of damage. Standard attack damage or physical damage that you do to an enemy's health bar, and will damage, damage that occurs to enemies or bosses that have a yellow stamina bar underneath their health. This so called stamina or stagger bar is known as the will gauge in Final Fantasy 16. And after reducing this bar to zero, you'll leave bosses and mini bosses staggered for an extended period of time as the bar begins to refill. And so, my tip for you is thus. Whenever you're building a loadout of iconic skills, be sure to not focus only on physical attack damage. Try and build a loadout of skills that is balanced between both attack damage and will damage. By having a loadout that features these skills that do more will damage than physical damage, you'll ensure that you'll be prepared for any mini bosses and bosses that you come across, allowing you to melt that stagger bar much more effectively ultimately meaning that the fight will be much more seamless as the boss will spend more time being defenseless and fully staggered. Moving on, another quick tip is that you should be using the lock-on wherever possible. You'll often find yourself outnumbered facing off against a myriad of enemies in Final Fantasy XVI, upon which at some times it's important that you focus only on one particular enemy, either because they're buffing other enemies or they're curing all of the damage that you do. It becomes infinitesimally easier if you simply focus your attacks on that enemy by locking on. This will effectively allow you to divide and conquer as you take out your enemies one by one. 
Up next is Limit Breaks, or as the game likes to call it in this game, Semi-Priming. Early on in your journey in Final Fantasy XVI, you'll inevitably unlock the ability to use your Limit Break. In this mode, not only does Clive's health automatically regen, but he moves faster and he attacks harder. It also becomes almost nigh on impossible for enemies to stagger him out of whatever combo he's currently doing. And so this limit break is truly advantageous, particularly when you find yourself outnumbered and outgunned. You can see how much limit break you have built and how much you have left if you have it toggled on by looking at the bar here under the health bar. This bar is built up by repetitively attacking enemies, as well as by taking damage and by getting precision dodges. If you're pressing the attack and defeating your enemies, or are simply getting your ass whooped, you'll find that this bar will fill at a rapid rate. And as such, there's no point in sitting on a full limit break bar, as all of the extra limit break that you build will be for nothing. So, use your limit break quite liberally. Alternatively, if you want to be quite strategic about your limit break, then definitely use it when you have low health. In fact, if your health hits zero whilst you have your limit break active, you won't actually die. So, if you know an attack is coming your way that you won't survive, just make sure to pop your limit break before getting hit. Moving on, let's talk about the Adate Stone, specifically the training mode. Final Fantasy XVI has an incredibly comprehensive training mode, taking a book out of Devil May Cry's pages. You'll be able to enter a room where you're able to spawn in an eye on almost any enemy that you want to practice on, allowing you to combo them to your heart's content if you want to optimize the amount of damage that you're able to do, or you're even able to have them attack you so that you're able to learn their attack patterns, meaning you'll be able to effectively deal with them out on the field. Alternatively, if you've just bought a whole bunch of iconic skills and you want to test them out and check them out in combat and see how they work, then the training mode is definitely the place to be. And last but certainly not least, don't forget to upgrade your iconic abilities. There are certain skills and abilities that in their base form people might find hard to use. For example, the Precision Dodge or the Magic Burst system. But by simply upgrading them, you're actually able to increase the window in which you're able to pull off Precision Dodges or Magic Burst combos, which will make it easier for those who struggle with the timing. If you're ever curious and want to know what exactly a skill will do when you upgrade or master it, you simply have to hover over it and press the triangle button to pull up a menu that shows off more about the skill. And with that, we come to the end of this video. If you enjoyed it or found it helpful, leave a like and subscribe, as there's more Final Fantasy content on the way. If you feel as though there's anything that I might have missed out as a tip, let me know down in the comments below. And with all that said and done, it has been me, Devil Never Cry. I'd like to thank all of you for watching, and as always, I'll see you all next video.